our urban civilization is moving towards a, a more sane way of living, a uh, more comfortable and beautiful way of living. TA was part of this picture. They were sort of the hardware of getting things done. Who do you go to to make decisions which benefit pedestrians and bicycles? I think for most of our advocates, it's something that four decades in the making, they have something to look back on and feel really proud of. Uh, we have activists who've been working on Central Park since before I was born, and being able to stand alongside them at the finish line felt really great. How about a campaign to get 100,000 auditions today? I don't think I had any idea uh, what uh, th that might involve, <laughs> exactly how many 100,000 was and how long it would take that to get that many, but, um, but I said, sure, let's do it. So we're here today to ask the city of New York and Mayor Bloomberg for a car-free Central Park. I was a graduate student at the University of Montana in Missoula, and I was working as a receptionist at the desk of a local bike organization, opening the mail, and there was this magazine with a photo on the cover of these you know, hundreds of New Yorkers in the loop drive, very angry. You know, they were a very spirited bunch, and they had a big sign that said, car-free Central Park. And I started reading about it, and I was like, wow, this is amazing. These people are who I want to be with. Every successful movement, every successful organization needs that one galvanizing campaign that really is so obvious to so many people and that is like emblematic of the larger mission. And um, that campaign, Car Free Central Park, has certainly been that for us. Car Free Crown Jewel Parks, Prospect and Central Park, your commissioner, Polly Trottenberg. Yeah. It's been a long process, and obviously the advocates get a, a, a big round of congratulations for this. I think over time, you know, we've gone from an age where it was so important to have cars throughout the city, but more and more people want to reclaim the streets. Uh, transportation alternatives has been at the forefront of that, but as the years have gone by, I think there's been a growing consensus. We want to see what we can do to reduce cars in the city, and particularly in our precious parks. The whole time I was commissioner and before, when I was the Manhattan Parks Commissioner, I was also the press secretary, and a bunch of different jobs, I would see every year or so, every few years, we'd take another little piece of the park back for bicyclists and pedestrians and other users. A big part of our work was de-urbanizing the park. Um, that meant closing vehicular entrances to the park, taking parking lots out of the park, so that it really was a place where people could leave the city behind. Great place to come as really a uh, young person, you know? You don't have to worry about to wear, you know, what you want, you know? safely, of course, you know? Now you have a place to go, so you don't have to worry about the cars being in here. New York City is probably is one of the two or three densest, most highly populated per square mile cities in the world. Having open spaces, especially parks, massively improves the quality of life of people. So I think what we've accomplished with more and better and higher quality open spaces can only lead to more of them. Big picture, once all the parks have no cars in them, streets come next. Public spaces that look and feel more enjoyable, um, a little more sanctuary-like, like parks, um, make sure that more public space in New York City can be reclaimed from cars, taken back for people. Having a newborn and having a Central Park car free now, it means so much to know that she's gonna grow up having the park as it should be, like a oasis with no cars. <laughs> that was it. Done. Wonderful. It's so rewarding. It's like a oh. wonderful deep kiss. <laughs> it's long and happening. But it's, it has happened. It's that trajectory we should be on. And we are on that.